Scotty, you think that Balthazar would approve of this? I think not. lie triangle-shaped pieces of undersea heaven. It's Poland brand calamaris and squid ink sauce. The delicious wedges of Mediterranean caught squid, served in a thick olive oil tomato paste, pre-cooked, ready to eat, and they have zero grams of fat. my comas is slowing down. So that means I'm on the mend. Roland's brand calamares squid in ink sauce! You know, I've heard that this exists, and I'm frankly surprised that we haven't done it until now! If you've never heard of soaking things in squid ink and using it as a sauce, what would you think the purpose of squid ink would be in today's society? Maybe you would think, fill up a ballpoint pen with it? Maybe you'd think, I would splash some across a blank canvas and people would view it as art? Maybe we would drown the terrorists in it to punish them! Anything but eating it! You know, a large part of me is dreading eating this, but an equally large part of me is madly curious about what this could possibly taste like. This has got to be a new taste that I've never tried before in my entire lifetime, guaranteed! And they're very, very coy, no pun intended, about what they reveal about the contents in this box. I mean, yeah, they give you a little bit of glimmer on the sides there of what might be lurking within this tin can here, but I really don't know what the heck to expect when I open this thing up. What the hell color is this going to be? Is it going to be blue? Is it going to be black? What the hell kind of color is squid ink? I mean, ink comes in all sorts of colors. And don't twist my words here, just because I'm curious as to what is within this tin can that I hold in my hand right now, doesn't mean that I'm not dreading it. I mean, what is dread besides a form of curiosity? Oh, you know, I just kind of want to get it over with, and now I gotta belabor the point, I gotta... I'm really not feeling this today, but... Alright, Balthazar Quill, get ready for another stellar read from your good buddy Hotties. Hottie. You know, I went through so many episodes without this happening once, and now, twice in rapid succession? What, you got me number two? I don't like it any better than you do. You think this is easy to do? I mean, you didn't see me after the show. I popped so many damn capillaries in my head that I was, my eyes were all bloodshot, and literally I could squeeze my eye like a freaking lemon and drip blood from it into the sink. <sighs> all right, I'm gonna nail this. I can't say read, I gotta say reads.
You know, normally, the act of opening a tin can is something I get done during the beginning announcements here on Yuck or Yum. But because the contents of this can are such a mystery, I didn't want to blow that surprise right off the bat. I need to build up the suspense to keep the people watching. And now, here, in the heat of the moment, you and I, yes, we have a nice interpersonal relationship right here. We are going to find out together. Time to pop this slimy can open. Oh, good lord, it's as black as night. It's like looking into my dark future. Kind of like the end of Legacy of Kane's Soul Reaver. This looks and smells like fish throw up. To answer the eternal question, what color is squid ink? It's kind of like a really, really dark brown kind of borderlining on a black, but it also seems to have a twinge of a red color, if you'll notice here on the, uh, the top of the can. I don't know what that's all about. Yeah, there are red color pens, but to be honest, red is the last color that I expected. Salsa de tomate. Tomato sauce? There's tomato sauce in here? <laughs> Alright, I mean, you can parse it out. I mean, if you really concentrate it amidst that fishy smell, yeah, you can smell tomatoes in there too! And what's the deal with that, huh? Nowhere on this package do you see the words tomato sauce. You have to scour the ingredients to find that little tidbit. Is it just an understood thing that you have to balance out squid ink with tomato sauce? If it is, then I've never heard about that. Let me know in the comment section down below. That is an unknown quantity that I was not expecting when I purchased this. So when I take my first bite of this, and I'm sure it's going to be nasty and horribly, and it's going to score really, really low, I got to keep in my mind that they did this, that they, they gave me something that they didn't, they didn't promise me, and I'm gonna have to take even more points off for that. Ugh, the more I look at this, the more it reminds me of that old Disney show, Raw Sewage. You remember that one? Raw Sewage. Beep, 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 beep. I mean, it looks like oxtail soup and it smells like mackerel. Hey, how the heck am I gonna eat this? I don't have any silverware. Hey, everybody, do you want, and oh. in other words, it's, Get some silver and, it, and it's, it's to do? Call this number. That's 1-800-555-1980. That's 1-800-555-1980. Call 1-800-555-1980. That's 1-800-555-1980. That's 1-800-555-1980. That's 1-800-555-1980. Call now, 1-800-555-1980. That number again, 1-800-555-1980. That number again, 1-800-555-1980. Our operators are standing by, 1-800-KL5-1980. That's 1-800-Klondike-5-1980. Repeat, 1-800-Klondike-5-1980. We're waiting for your call. 1-800-Klondike-5-1980. Call now. 1-800-Klondike-5-1980. That's 1,800-555-1980. We wish to speak with you. 18,005,551,980. All calls are toll free. 1-800,555 followed by 1,980. In Roman numerals I, D, C, C, D, L, V, M, C, M, L, X, X, X. That's I, D, triple C, D, L, V, M, C, M, L, triple X. Well, that's one way to do it, I guess. Never a blasted smash cut when you need it. Good lord, I feel like I'm diffusing a bomb just sticking a fork into this. Oh man, just something about the black of this, it kind of reminds me of spare ribs and just kind of like the off, like, almost violet color of this fluid that's dripping from it. I'm really, really ruining this, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm really taking one for the team, so you're welcome. And don't think that I'm ragging on seafood. I love seafood! I love calamari, in fact, when it's prepared correctly. This is not what it's supposed to look like! Look at it, look at it, look at it! It's like what the whole world's gonna look like after the final battle. Doomsday! Armageddon! Is it gonna taste like Armageddon? Only one way to find out. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> 
Don't get me wrong, this is like, not something I would ever snack on voluntarily. But it really isn't the worst thing that I've had on this show. As a matter of fact, that tomato sauce that I was complaining about before, you barely even taste it. So, you know what? What I said before about t knocking points off for that, I'm just gonna forget that I ever said that because it's really not a factor. You know, I typically go into these reviews blind. Perhaps I'm gonna go blind if I keep eating stuff like this, but... You know, I didn't do the research on Squid Ink, and I don't know what you have to do to it to make it edible. Maybe you have to add that, that tomato sauce into it to get rid of some weird foreign taste that makes people up chuck. You never know. I have to try to explain this taste, but it's, it's going to be really tough for me because I really don't know what it tastes like. It's kind of like a really numb taste. Really light. Kind of like a light fish gravy. And that goes for the smell, too. I mean, when I opened up this can, like so many other things on this show, it enveloped my head in a gray cloud that just kind of like meandered there for like a minute and then dissipated. But now that the smell is gone, it barely smells like anything at all. I mean, really, the only thing I smell is the tomato sauce, and that's not really even reflected in the taste. And you would think, by the way that it looks, you would think that this would be like nuclear fish death in your stomach. I mean, I think of all the fish that I've had on this show, this is actually the worst looking fish that I've ever had. Except maybe that cuttlefish. Go back and watch that show if, if you don't remember what that looked like. That was nasty, but... You would think just by looking at this that I'd be running to the bathroom to throw up my guts right now because it's just so nasty, but the truth is it's actually a very, very light taste that... I mean, just look at me. I didn't even dry heave once. You know, so often on this show I've used the term doable. What does doable mean exactly? Doable does not mean that you keep this at your house. Doable does not mean that you go for seconds on this one. Doable doesn't mean that you would just snack on this while watching TV and not even think about what you're eating. You are going to be thinking about what you're eating, rest assured. You're going to be thinking about this. You can't get this out of your mind. Doable is like if somebody offers this to you at a party or like, you know, some kind of weird get together. You go to a friend's house for the first time and your friend's kind of eccentric and they give you this weird snack. You could probably eat this and get through the day, and it won't ruin your time with them. In fact, you might even go see them again if you could just take that bullet repeatedly. But doable doesn't necessarily mean good. I mean, I say this is doable because it doesn't have a strong fishy taste, it doesn't make me want to hurl, but it does still have that... that squiddy, chewy, fleshy texture that is really not pleasant. To chew it, it's almost like half food and half gum. But I gotta level with you, I'm a fair and just judge. It's a far cry from the way that I was at the beginning of this episode when I said that I was gonna take points away for, for not telling me that there was tomato sauce in here. I'm actually gonna give this some brownie points. Yes, I'm actually gonna go up because of what it looks like, and it looks like that it would just do a number on my stomach, and it's actually not that bad. So if I were to give this a half rating, I would have to give it... You know what? I'll give it two hops. The heck is that? And me a cunt to heck to bibble? What? Basked in its glory? I'm not looking at Keith Lee over here, I'm looking at some weird circle. 96 sides, you say? It's a circle, it doesn't have any sides, it just has some dots on it. No, like Nagami, I don't think I'm going to be doing that. It's like watching a video of yourself while you're drunk. Hey, you know what? I think I'm going to make this show extra interactive for all the folks out there. There's a comment section down below. You describe to me what I was going through in that prior episode, because I don't want to go back and watch myself. It's going to be embarrassing. And what are my final words about this item right here? Well, I do not endorse it. But then again, this is not my thing. I know people out there who would enjoy a nice squiddy snack, and you know what? The apple doesn't fall that far from the tree. My own mother used to eat sardines. Yeah, the, the, the silvery fishy ones with the heads on them. I always thought it was gross, but the people are out there and there's bro. So for those people who are probably watching right now, you can take this item and you can add an extra two hops to the rating.
Or would that be Neocon the Hexagons? As disgusting as this looks, as much as these bloody fluids are eating their way through the paper plate and like osmosising their way onto the table below, this is actually one of the better seafood items I've had on this here show. So this is your good buddy. Sears Roebuck sitting right next to me here at 316 Gimmick Street, and he's gonna help add his own brand of color to this commercial announcement. A man by the name of Alden English. The maestro of melodies. So the story goes, Alden was a boy with not a penny to his name. He lived in a dilapidated wooden shack down in Panama City, Florida. It's between Pensacola and Tallahassee. He got it in his head that it would be a good idea to build a clothing store in a vacant lot in a dumpy part of town. But after acquiring the plot of land, he was all wiped out of cash. So he had to hire day laborers through a handshake deal, promising they big bucks once the biz natch was off the ground. Those were some trying and difficult days. Well, they laid down the concrete and started building up the walls and all that shit when Alden got into a bit of a cluster muck with the workers. They had been working such long hours with no breaks, no food, and no water. They started dropping like mother flies. One of the guys even got sick and he had to be rushed to a medical facility. Heat stroke and heat exhaustion, two very different things. So they all piled into their van, cursing Alden's name the whole way, and wouldn't you know it, the sick guy stuck his head out the window as they sped off and vomited his guts out. He happened to vomit all over Alden's face. An involuntary forceful expulsion. Now it was 90 degrees outside, the walls were only half done, but Alden was like, eh eh, this building's getting done today. So he grabbed a hammer, what? some cement, what? some stucco, what? some brick face, what? some support beams, what? some spackle, what? and clanged and banged the day away putting that building up. Since he hadn't installed the plumbing yet, he couldn't wash the vomit off of his face, and the acid started dripping into his eyes as it mixed with his sweat. Practically working blind, he said to himself, Hot damn, this vomit in my eyes, it sears! The searing hot kiss of ejection. And that's how Sears got its name, folks. From searing hot vomit stinging a man's eyes. I'll tell you what, Alden, you are a bona fide stud. The Shakespeare of song. The Picasso of pain. The Beethoven of baritone. Yeah, thanks for all your help, sir, but I hope not to see you again. Hey, how do you sing through your nose like that? <laughs>